everybody. Welcome. We are the third thought. We're going to perform long form improvisation for you tonight. Which means we're going to make everything up right here, right now. Nothing pre-planned. Never so, been seen before? Never, been, never will be seen again. Probably not. Uh, but all I need is a, uh, a suggestion from the audience. Anything? We're going to do what's called an Armando Diaz suggestion. Anyone? Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber.
So, well, where I come from, you, your husband gives you the gift, and then you try to make the gift for him out of the gift. That's my bad. Okay. I didn't, so. Okay. We have different traditions over there. Okay. Great.
It's like, like your, your sister came to me and like, I gotta ask you one thing first. Who is it, Dad? Why did you start calling her Erica? Her name's Stephanie. <laughs> because. Too close to yours. I, I as well think of the Backstreet Boys 
And thank goodness we don't repeat monologues with our group because I will never tell this story again. You're lucky. Uh, when I was a young child, when I was 13, I, uh, I auditioned for the Mickey Mouse Club in 1988. And, <laughs> big deal, yeah. Um, and I got, uh, there's thousands of kids across the country, call back, 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 and there was 12 of us. There's only 12 kids in the Mickey Mouse Club. Me, 10 other kids, and this kid named Tony Dinetti, who's better known as Howie D from the Backstreet Boys, for those of you who know the Backstreet Boys. So Tony and I, that was his stage name at the time, his real name is Howard Durrell, uh, he and I got cast on this show. And so it was like the greatest thing that you could imagine. I mean, I went from doing a community theater show in Clearwater, to getting some agent, and then getting cast in the Mickey Mouse Club. You can imagine how humongous that was. They were telling us uh, that we're going to be filming in August, and the pay scale, and you know, go out and shoot, go do some commercials, come back, everything's going to be great. So me and Tony, Howie, had the same agent. So we went out to New York together, went out to Manhattan, auditioned for a slew of commercials, and uh, about three weeks into our stay there in New York, in Greenwich Village, uh, uh, we got the call. Where my mom told me in St. Patrick's Cathedral, as a good Irish mother would tell a good Irish son, Patrick, that, uh, that I was let go, that Tony and I were both let go from the cast. So it was pretty heartbreaking, to say the least. Um, and that's the first thing, I, and I'm not done yet, but that's the first thing I think about with Justin Bieber. But as a result of that story of Grand Schools, I think of something else. And once again, it's the only time I'll share it since I'm here. We stayed in a 400 square foot apartment in Greenwich Village. That was my, my cousin slash uncle. I called him uncle, it was actually my cousin. He's a fireman there in New York, and they were gone for the summer, so we stayed there. The only requisite for us staying there is we had to take care of their 15-year-old cat. And their 15-year-old cat could no longer eliminate by itself. <laughs> what I mean by that is that every day, my mother or I had to squeeze the cat's bum. <laughs> my mother's from England. We had to squeeze the cat's bum until the cat would eliminate. And the cat would <laughs> make these sounds that were so horrific, I can't forget them today. 23 years later. And that's what I think about when I think about Justin Bieber. I don't think we need another one. <laughs> Justin Bieber, has, his most famous um, attribute is not his singing voice and it's not his music, it's his hair. And uh, so that's, what I, that's the first thing that I think about about Justin Bieber. And I have had the Justin Bieber haircut many times in my life. This is a short hair for me, and I usually wear a little longer. Um, a couple of years ago, I was out of work and I wasn't really concerned about money at the time, so I bought a motorcycle and I, with the goal of driving to Argentina, that was, that's what I was going to do. Um, it made sense to me to just get the buzzer, buzz all the hair off. So I, I went, not bald, but just like the buzz cut. Just very, very short for to fit inside the motorcycle helmet. And the low maintenance didn't want nice, you know, the whole thing. And just, I, Central America, I wanted to be prepared. So, I started driving through Mexico on my motorcycle with a short haircut underneath the helmet. I got to uh, Mexico City, went to the, uh, um, the Aztec ruins, Temple of the Sun, uh, Pyramid of the Sun, Pyramid of the Moon. Um, saw all the great things down in Mexico. I decided that it was time for another haircut. It had been about three weeks. So I went into this guy, uh, I think his name was Jose, in, in a small town next to the pyramids. Um, asked him for a haircut, told him that I wanted the same thing, just like buzz and shorter. Um, and I ended up with a military flat top. And I don't know how that happened, but it was like kind of tilted on the side. And, bzz, and so Jose was like, yeah, really good, look good for the ladies. And yeah, it, was, it was just an awful, awful haircut. And so I don't recommend that you get haircuts in Mexico. And that's what I think about when I think about Justin Bieber. <laughs>
at the checkout when they said, hey, he's donating dollars for the children. I'm like, of course. You know, I don't understand why this would happen to me. Oh, look at all my beautiful hair is just falling on the ground. <laughs> this, is, this is so terrible. If you don't, if you don't understand why it's happening to you, you just you don't understand science. Mom, what? I want to I show you how 
shits in the toilet. You shit what? <laughs> you shit. Hey. You don't use that language in my presence, young lady. I'm sorry, Dad. You're right. I should have kept my cool. All right, get ready for another one, Dad, okay? All right. 